I remember the sea and the sound of the sea and the, the waves breaking on the shore. That's probably my first vivid memory. Well, my favorite souvenir with my father is when I was eight years old and it has to do with painting. And one night, and I guess about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, I started to fall asleep on the stool and I knocked over a bottle of linseed oil in the garage, which obviously made a big noise. And he opened the door and he looked at me and he said, what are you doing out here? And I said, I'm painting, Dad. And he came over to me and he put his hand on my shoulder and he looked at my painting. And he, I thought he was going to scold me. I thought he was going to be upset. And he said, okay, clean up what you, the mess you made and get, get yourself to bed. Um, we'll talk about it in the morning. And it was, that was a great feeling because I knew it wasn't a bad thing. Um, but my mother was about literature and uh, my mother turned me on to Shakespeare and she turned me on to Chaucer and she turned me on to all of the old um, English literature and Milton and many, many things that fed my imagination. I was in the University of California State, Long, University at Long Beach, and I was studying theater at the time. And I met Joseph Chaikin, uh, who was in Long Beach doing performances with the Open Theater. Jo Joseph Chaikin came up from behind me and whispered in my ear, you can change anything until your last breath. You can change everything until your last breath. And I kind of decided on the spur of the moment that I needed to go. And when I got to New York City, I didn't have any money. Um, so I couldn't study in schools. I studied in museums and I studied in books. I worked in bookstores. And when I could, I'd buy books about different periods of art. And I would look at the pictures and then I would go to the museums. And at the time, uh, Guernica by Picasso was at the Museum of Modern Art amongst a number of other things. And the Museum of Modern Art in the 1970s was a very user-friendly kind of place. Um, everything was available and you didn't feel any tension about security. There were people in the rooms. And so you could really sit there and look and go up and almost smell the painting. And it was that kind of contact for me um, Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh is in the Museum of Modern Art. And I remember sitting there looking at that painting for an hour and a half. But, so I didn't study officially. I'm a self-taught artist. It's from books and a few very good friends who were artists who gave me a clue here and gave me a clue there and said, hey, Jim, try that. And that's my way. That's how it's happened for me. But I'm primarily a, a, a painter, a, a, a draftsman. I, I do a lot of, my art is based on my drawing. Uh, it's something I've been doing for me, it's something that I'm passionate about. But I don't consider myself to be a, a multi-talented artist. I, I, hope that, uh, I hope that people look at what I do and they find what I do interesting. But I'm a painter and a ceramist now. Savien des tripes comes from the intestines. I don't try to control that except in re relationship to the dynamic of precision and how I go about structuring something. Uh, every, every blank piece of paper, every blank pot um, is a new cosmology, is a new universe for me. I had a good friend, Pierre Lacola, who passed away last year, who was a phenomenal painter, and he used to say that he was a painter of the imaginary. And I think that pretty much sums up more or less who I am and what I do. Uh, from the primitives to Van Eyck to the, the whole of the Renaissance, I mean, of course, I love Leonardo, but also Raphael and Michelangelo and Le Caravage and all of these people 
uh, all through the centuries. Everybody, there's always been somebody who's touched me in one way or the other, um, up to, you know, up to the Impressionism and then the post-Impressionist, all the people that use their imagination in different ways. Uh, we're very lucky because in the 20th century, we were allowed a huge gift, and that gift was the communication. The mass media allowed us to have access to all of these different ideas and energies that had all come and been born out of uh, extraordinary cultures. Ceramics is tactile. Um, when you're throwing a pot, there's a whole dynamic that happens in relationship to the clay and the fragility of the clay and the texture of the clay. Yes, it's a support for my drawing, for my graphic work, for my painting, if you will, but it has a lot to do with sculpture. The pot itself is about the form. It's a continent. It's going to contain something, so it has a function, so it has a structure and a, and a reason that. But it's, a, it's about the sculpture. It's about the form, the dynamic of the form itself. Even if you have a teacher, you've got to go home and practice. So ceramics is the same. And sometimes I would succeed, and sometimes I wouldn't. But every time I succeeded, it was just a step up the ladder for me, up the staircase, if you will, in terms of what I could do with clay. And once clay's in you, meaning once you feel it, once you've had a moment, I, and I can't explain how that happens, it's just like with anything, the light turns on. I know that if I started to throw pots today, I couldn't throw the same pots I threw before or use the same amount of clay in the beginning. You have to work up to that because it's a physical activity too, but it's in my mind. All of those things I learned are in my mind and that comes from Valerice. That's the root of it. That I've got a long way to go, that I'm just at the beginning, that after 40 years, the most exciting thing for me is to discover something new every day. I don't really think about that too much. I just try to get better at what I'm doing and hopefully that'll lead to something else, okay? But I have no idea of what that'll be. I hope I'll be able to create. Um, and that's a huge privilege. And anything else that happens on the, on the side of that uh, is just icing on the cake, as we say. Uh, it's, it's been a, a very interesting journey. Um, from the time I left California uh, until today, uh, there are things that I could change if, if I could go back and, and, and redo them. I think any person that is intelligent would, would tell you, yeah, I'd, I'd change that or I'd do that. But I don't have any regrets. And I just hope I have the time left to uh, explore more domains and, and to do more work.